أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Previously I have talked about the in session 6 where the diagnosis and differential diagnosis of the Previously I have talked about the diagnosis and the differential diagnosis of the opacities single opacity we go for the single opacity first you see that it should be uniform or non-uniform it will be uniform opacity then see that, that, that it, is, it is associated with a curve or LSS curve or any fluid level or the radio opacity which has uniform appearance but have they have no they have no curves or fluid levels. The non-uniform obesity or non-homogeneous obesity is again divided into two for the learning purpose, whether it is non-reticulated or it is a reticulated type of obesity. Most of the reticulated obesities or non-reticulated obesities, these are the result of acute inflammation or chronic inflammation or tumor and tumor like states and the miscellaneous causes like autoimmune diseases and pneumoconiosis and intestinal diseases which I, I have presented to you uh, many many of the uh, skygrams. Now this start of the session 7 although I feel that uh, it should uh, the x-ray test biology should be learned actually with interest so that you can pick up the abnormality not depending on the radiologist because you are a clinician and this is what I call as a clinical radiology because you know the history of the patient you have done your clinical examination you are going for the uh, routine investigation in which one is the x-ray chest so you can make the diagnosis easily rather than a radiologist who is sitting in his room and there was no history actually given to him. He has not examined that patient. He does not know about anything about the patient. He is dependent on the skygrams. That's all. What is seen is seen by everybody. If I see a zero or a black in the uh, x-ray, he will also see the black or a white in the x-ray, the same one. In the start of the session 7, you know, now talking about the middle mediastinum, actually mediastinum is the space, the thoracic cavity minus lungs. What is remaining in the thoracic cavity is called the mediastinum. There will be a superior mediastinum above the external line and inferior mediastinum below the external line. Now inferior mediastinum will be divided anteriorly anterior mediastinum in the middle part, middle mediastinum and posterior mediastinum. For us as a physician, middle mediastinum is the most important uh, parameter for the diseases as concerned. Because it will cover the heart and the great muscles. So we will divide the mediastinum actually in the up the middle mediastinum will be divided on the ambulatory division disease for the learning purpose into upper part of the middle mediastinum how you form and this is the upper part of the middle mediastinum this is the border of the heart this is the border of the heart where the border actually changes the direction a point should be placed here and here is the border which is changing direction there you will just actually uh, draw a line between the, these two points. This is the point, this is the demarcating line for the learning purpose into upper part of the middle mediastinum and the lower part of the middle mediastinum. The lower part of the middle mediastinum is occupied by the heart and the coverings pericardium. 
the upper part of the middle mediastinum is actually mean, is means by the great vessels and the associated structures you see. Coming here is the trachea which is dividing and the vascular shadows, these are the superior part of the mediastinum. The mediastinum is upper part of the middle mediastinum and the lower part of the middle mediastinum. The lower part of the middle mediastinum is the heart and its coverings. The upper part of the middle mediastinum, the gate vessels and associated structures. Repeating once more. So I have the lower part of the middle mediastinum means the heart and the coverings. Let us start now. The lower part of the middle mediastinum. If you are actually want to uh, examine the lower part of the middle mediastinum, first of all the size and then shape will be discussed now. That is if you see the radiology of uh, the normal x-ray, you will find that this is the outermost end, this is the outermost end. Now measure the transthoracic diameter above the dome of the diaphragm. For example, it is, you have measured that it is 18 centimeter. Now half of it, half of it is 9 centimeter. Now measure the maximum diameter of the heart, transversely, not obliquely. If it is lower than 9 centimeter, it means the heart size is normal. If it is above the 9 centimeter you have measured, it means the is heart is enlarged. I am not saying the hypertrophy it has dilated, I said the heart is enlarged. So, the thoracic ratio to the cardiac ratio is 2 is to 1, or cardiothoracic ratio is 1 is to 2, it means that. If it is altered, it means that definitely there is heart size is increased. This is very important diagnostic marker, because electrocardiograph will show you the hypertrophy. It will not show you the size of the heart, whether the, the requirement should be fulfilled that deeply inspired and hold the breath properly. The patient should be in the in the standing position and he is still and he is straight so that the parameters of the uh, cardiomegaly can be fulfilled. This is a very important uh, point whether there is a cardiomegaly uh, or not, heart size is increased or not. The second part of it, which part of the heart left sided or the right sided because the ventricles are dominant in, in this in the shadow because there is a lot of blood collected you see the white, whitening of the uh, middle mediastinum white it is grayish white it is vascular because it consists of the blood which is a radio opaque uh, material so what you will do is now the, it is a dominant left ventricular enlargement and dominant right ventricular enlargement how will you say? See the apex. If the apex is transverse or is moving upwards, it is dominant right ventricular enlargement. If it is, its long axis is downwards, not transverse, not above, then it is dominant left ventricular enlargement. Here you see that it is transverse. So it means the dominant is the right ventricular enlargement rather than left ventricular dominant. I say the word dominant. So cardiomegaly can be assessed by this methodology, which is very easy to understand. Now, another important point because heart is, if it is, you say there is dominant left ventricular enlargement or the do dominant left ventricular enlargement, and you see that the, on the parallel to the heart there is hilum. If hilum is not seen, for example, hilum is not seen by this, then definitely this is the the harm the, the heart enlarged, the hilum can be seen easily. In the case of the right ventricular enlargement, the left ventricular enlargement. But in cases of uh, the other like pericardial effusion, 
the hyla cannot be seen. You cannot peep into the hyla. This is called the hilum overlay sign. Here is la enlargement of the middle venous retina is because of the pericardial effusion. You can't see the hyla. Hilum overlay sign means fluid in the pericardial cavity. There it is the dominant left ventricle dominant enlargement. See the apex, which is of course downwards. The heart was enlarged. First of all, size, and then see this long axis of the apex. It is going downwards. The dominant left ventricular dominant here, and right ventricular dominant. They have looked the apex. Heart was much enlarged. The hilum was seen here. Here you see the direction, the long axis of the apex is on very straight. Sometimes it is like upwards, like the boot shape heart. Sabor and where C O E R where and Sabot. This is called Coer and Sabot in Latin. And it is called the boot shape heart. Soldier's boot shape heart. If you see this type of a a presentation it means that it is right ventricular enlargement. Then another point is the massive cardiomegaly. The hilum is seen here. Hilum is seen here. You can peep into the hilum. Heart is extensively enlarged. It is the heart of the, you say that of the bovis, buffalo's heart. It's seen most of the cases of the aortic irritation or mixed aortic valve disease. So both sides are definitely much, much enlarged. Here you see the bump which is coming out apex. And the direction is definitely here like this. In the straight one, the right ventricular uh, basically we is in now in stress. Now second part of my discussion will be the shape of the heart. Shape of the heart means that border should be described. This is the left border of the heart because this is the superior mediastinum, uh, superior part of the middle mediastinum, sorry, and this is the inferior part of the middle mediastinum. The border is left border and the right border and the, the, the base of the heart, inferior border is masked by the dome of the di diaphragm. Now this border, left border for the study purposes can be divided into upper one third and the lower two third. Now upper one third will represent the left atrium. The lower two third will represent the left ventricle. Right border, again, here is right border, upper one third, lower one third and remaining two third. Upper one third will represent the superior vena cava entering into the, into the right atrium. The lower one third here it is at the level of the cardiophrenic angle. This is inferior vena cava in exp uh, expression in the heart. Uh, X-ray. Cardio. This is the lower one third representing the inferior vena cava. Upper one third representing the upper, uh, superior vena cava, and remaining will be the uh, right. This is the border of the heart. Now this is the right border, and basically it is formed by the right atrium. Not uh, the the right ventricle because right ventricle is here somewhere here you cannot differentiate between the right atrium and the right ventricle now if right ventricle is enlarged right atrium is parallelly enlarged it always is the rule it should be enlarged so indirectly this is the, this is the right ventricular border you can say but actually this is right atrial border not right ventricular border which is masked here in this way, the shape of the heart is described. Shape means the borders, the apex, you know, these are should be described. Now, if the left atrium is enlarged, this border will become more prominent, like this. In this case, the left atrial enlargement is seen, and then it changes the direction. You can see like this. This is the left ventricle. Here the upper one third superior vena cava, inferior one third, inferior vena cava remaining the atrium which is bumping out here as a border. 
Now see here, the left ventricular aneurysm, the apex here is a double shadow which is casting here. Because it, this represents the left atrium, this represents the left ventricle. The hair is coming out. This part is bulging anteriorly, like this, and there is slight calcification also in this. This is a left ventricular aneurysm. Although uh, there are, you know, the other things are also uh, present here. Lithium battery connected to the, the pacemaker is seen here. This is the uh, artifact. Now, another important problem is this. I say this is the part which I have described as the left atrial border. This is the left ventricular border. It is if, it, if the pulmonary hypertension occurs, the above, which is uh, the pulmonary conus here, it will be in one line. It is called a strengthening of the left border of the heart. You see in cases of the Mitral valve disease. Mitral valve disease means mitral stenosis, oblique mitral regurgitation. In mitral stenosis, only this bulge will be seen, the left atrium, not ventricle. Ventricle is normal, rather a small in uh, size. It's bulging here, okay, the right ventricle. The heart is enlarged dominantly because this is the apex pointing downwards to a dominant left ventricular enlargement. Left atrial hypertrophy separately you can see here, this one, and then the left ventricular border, right ventricular border. In this fashion, left atrial hypertrophy will be seen dominant here mitral stenosis. Light it, the left atrium will be enlarged gradually, 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 so it will, it will move backwards and it will make the false border on the right side. That is called double right heart border. One is curve is here, the second curve is this. It's so much enlarged, left atrium, it is equivalent to the left ventricle cavity. It is very big uh, left atrium. It's called doubling of the right heart border. It is a part of the mitral valve disease pathogenesis. Double right heart border is marked here. You can see this one and this one. Double shadowing of the right heart border. Severe mitral stenosis with regurgitation. Now, how much knowledge is prov provided here? You can see how radiology helps the cardiologist. In cases of the upper part of the medial mediastinum, which is divided now, is by the line. I have said you make a line here. This is the upper part of the medial mediastinum. The upper part of the medial mediastinum will be divided into four parts imaginary lines. You cut this one and this one. This is the first, second, third and fourth. Like this. The first one will represent the ascending aorta. The second and third will represent the arch of aorta. The most prominent part of the arch of aorta is called aortic knuckle here. And the fourth part, this is the fourth part, it bulges out. It is called pulmonary conus. It is a prominent pulmonary conus, representing the pulmonary hypertension. Very characteristic sign is seen in this x-ray. Upper middle mediastinum, which I am talking about, the, the size, usually it is around 6 cm to 7, 7 cm. If you measure upper part of the middle mediastinum here, it is 15 cm, 14 cm. Double the normal size. Just measure it and see the borders. This is the first part I have divided into four by on learning purposes. First one representing the ascending aorta. Second one the arch of aorta. The third one is the arch of aorta. Second the third arch of aorta. The most prominent part the aortic knuckle. The fourth part is this one which is bulges out very very in pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary conus is definitely seen it is very prominent type of the uh, pulmonary conus. Widening of the upper part of the middle genome, this is a wide, usually about 6 to 7 centimeter in most of the cases. Here we measure it, it will come 10.5 or 12 centimeter. Again you will divide 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
and then you say that there is a winding upper part of the medial mediastinum. It may be vascular or it may be non-vascular. Causes of the widening of the upper part of the medial mediastinum. The aortic dissection you will see the, this actually it is uh, the diameter of the upper medial mediastinum is enlarged if you measure it. Measure it. It is one centimeter, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine centimeter. And there is, you know, upgoing upper part, the aortic neck, the arch of aorta is high, here, somewhere, here. And there is in case of the aortic dissection. Paraaortic laminopathy because the trachea is this and this is the part, this is the border of the another border. And this is the another border. These are the paraaortic lymph nodes which are enlarged in cases of the Molecularifferent disorder, lymphoproliferative disorder, or infectious diseases, etc. So they, then we can pick in Hodgkin disease mostly. The upper part of the middle mediastinum is enlarged, and these are the the border. Look, the border. It is not regular border. It is irregular. Vascular shadows are always uniform. Border should be uniform. Your in origin on the ascending arch of aorta, very characteristic actually seen here, classical. This is the first part of that upper part of the mediastinum which is bulging out, ascending aorta. In the later view, it is confirmed that it is ascending aorta. You can confirm by Doppler studies and echo. Aortic aneurysms of the arch of the aorta from coming out here, bulge here. This is the pulmonary conus. This is coming out here. Aortic aneurysm, arch of aorta, arising from the arch of aorta, wide middle mediastinum. Unfolding of the aorta is seen in the cases of the hypertension, which is not controlled. Now, this is the inferior vena cava, this is the right atrial border, this is superior vena cava. Again, it is moving this, and the descending aorta is also seen here, marking here. And there is aortic nickel, which is much prominent and twisted. This is called unfolding of the arch of aorta, which is commonly seen in cases of severe hypertension. This is the end of session 7, which I have talked about the, the lower part of the middle mediastinum means the heart and the coverings. You will study the size of the, and you will also study the shape, which, are, which can be modified and altered by the diseases. And the upper part of the middle mediastinum, which is abruptly divided into four parts, the first part is representing the ascending aorta, the second part and third part representing the arch of aorta, and the fourth one is uh, this one. So, upper part of the middle mediastinum. So, you will study the lower part, the size of the lower part of the middle mediastinum, and the shape of this. The lower border is formed, the left uh, border is formed by the upper one third left atrium, lower two third left ventricle. And the other one on the right side, the, the inferior one third representing the inferior vena cava, superior one third representing the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, superior vena cava, and the middle there is right atrial border. So different diseases will cause the impression in this way. So it is a long discussion which I have actually covered in about 15 20 minutes. I have talked previously two hours on this session, only this part. But because of the lack of the time, people do not like long discussions. They want shortcuts in life, shortcut in the study. Ultimately, your be what is your end beneficiary is the patient. And patient will decide that you are able to diagnose him. You are a good doctor. You are an energetic doctor. You have, a, you have knowledge about it, decided by the patient, not by the College of Physician and Surgeon, or not by the College or Royal College. It is the decision by the patient that you are able to diagnose him, manage him properly, and give the uh, preventive role. You have also the, uh, a part of the preventive type of a uh, role here, as far as the pulmonology is concerned, or cardiology is concerned, or whatever it is. I hope that you can, uh, you have understood this uh, middle mediastinum upper part of the middle mediastinum, lower part of the middle mediastinum. Inshallah, we will meet again in the session 8 very soon.
I hope you good luck in your life. Remember the patients are your examiners. وما نرى ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين وما علينا إلا البلاغ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته